to have a, the, the very first mandatory programmers meeting this past Saturday. Now, I mean, how absurd is that, Tom, from your I perspective mean, it's, as having it's, been it's, in that It's position? ridiculous when you, when you understand the kind of station that WPFW and Pacifica stations are. It's not a corporate station. It is a station whose very core is to address issues that are important to the community, and the people who do that are volunteers. And it's the thing that brings the volunteers together, these are people who do all kinds of things in their day-to-day -day lives, and they volunteer to, to do on-air programming at WPFW. So central to accomplishing that is being able to come together, share with each other, have some understanding of where the station is going. I mean, right now we're in the midst of this trying to move, and not understanding that is not only harmful to the programmers, but it's also uh, uh, just harmful to the community and it's a betrayal of the community's trust. Mm. Joni or Mayuki, would you like to pick up I on that? I would also like to add that again, going back to the corporate management style, not only has there been no meeting of the volunteers, but more recently there have been the paid staff, uh, it's only the top management that has been meeting. So the frontline staff that does the news, that works on cultural affairs, uh, et cetera, they're not being brought to the table for meetings either. So it's only the 1% that is and having meetings. And let's not meetings. lose sight of what she just said. We are all volunteer programmers. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are all volunteers. And uh, we're not trying to shirk responsibility. We desire to have these kinds of meetings. Miyuki. Uh, the challenge has been, um, since uh, Mr. Hughes has taken over, is communication. First of all, we don't have the best um, internet service, so that it's not easy for us on the WPFW.org to communicate well with each other. Things bounce back, mailboxes get filled up, so it's not the best means of communicating. He does have weekly pledge drive meetings, but they're set between four and six, when most of the volunteers who work at the station have day jobs are at work. So it really precludes us from really participating in a real way. I had been able to participate, and I would take notes and send it back to the PA, and I would take the feedback that I, get, I receive from the PA back to the pledge drive meetings, but I was virtually ignored in terms of the request. Can we please fulfill the past thank you gifts that we owe the audience? Can we please seek other means of having, um, raising money other than just pledge drives? Other things that the PA brought up, I would take back, but... I was virtually ignored to, uh, to the level of frustration. He did have a retreat back in August uh, for staff, LSB members, uh, community advisory board members, and the programmers. But again, it was done during the weekdays, during working hours. So it was a Tuesday, Wednesday, I believe, from 9 until 6. So it precluded, again, many of the volunteers who have day jobs to participate and be able to make input and have that exchange. There was a meeting that the PA sponsored. There were two meetings, in January and in March. The PA had our monthly meeting, which, in which we try to cover a lot of material. We try to train each other how to do better, uh, to produce better shows, how to use um, networking and different type of media. But, uh, and we have other things that we have to cover as a PA. But for two meetings in January and March, we, uh, he asked if he could make a presentation, which is fine. But everyone who works at WPFW is not necessarily the PA. Again, a full station meeting is really what's required in, uh, to communicate to everyone what is going on. And that's what's lacking because, again, there are major issues. Uh, staffs, uh, at that time, uh, staff hours have been cut in half. Um, there were uh, new uh, uh, modes of uh, development that need to be developed. We're moving into a new home, and we have no idea where we were. And then just uh, the idea that we have an interim, interim program director who couldn't make any changes. So then, as Wilder stated, we could not make as a station a improvements in order to have a better sound and be better broadcasters. Okay. It's an antiquated uh, management style, even in corporations today. They talk about inclusive rather than exclusive. We have a general manager whose style is exclusive in a world where democracy is the number one word that we hear every day. Even reckless dictators talk about democracy, and this guy does not share anything. So, you know, I, you know, I, I, I'm just saying it's, it's, it's so out of the ballpark that he would come to a community radio station and not have an understanding of shared decision making, of mm. sense of shared community. Mm. Speaking of which, our relocation deadline is July. Now, owning a business myself, having moved my business, 
working with DCRA on a regular basis because this is part of a requirement for my business, the kind of business that I do, we're down there almost every single day. I know that it takes many, many months knowing the system to do just about anything that's getting a permit to do electrical work, that means getting a permit for having architectural plans uh, approved. And up to this point, none of those things have been done. And when the programmers have tried to reach out to the general manager, many of us in this community, in this room, have connections and ties to many city agencies, and we have literally been, the door has been shut on us. So does anybody want to talk about the length of time that it took for us to move the last time we moved and the implications of where we are needing to find a new home in six months? Well, gearing up to move, generally gearing up to move a radio station is at least a year-long process, if not two years, uh, because, uh, you know, what people may not understand is that in order to move into a, it's not as though we can just move into any vacant space. Uh, wherever we move, there's a certain amount of architectural retrofitting that has to be in place, that has to make sense for a radio station. So obviously we have people out in your viewing audience who are familiar with abandoned school buildings and the like in the community. Well, unfortunately, a radio station can't just move into any building. A radio station has to have certain technical specifications in place in order to move. And here we are, it is December, and we are to move by the end of June 2012. So we are, the clock is ticking. Uh, we're, we're closing in on less than six months, and there's no concrete plan in place. And two things, Robin, we need to, to, to procure a building, a physical space, but the, the equipment we have right now is functionally obsolete. Again, 20th century versus 21st century. We have to get brand new equipment. So we're talking about two major tar do dollar targets that we have, again, no idea, no comprehension of what it is, how close, how far we are to it, and how long we have to get to it. And again, as the people, as since they're depending mostly on on-air fund drives, we're the ones who are basically going to the listeners, trying to raise, you know, put our hands out to raise those dollars. And if it's, it's got to be a collaboration. We've got to work together with the community, with the LSB, with the CAB in order to make this happen. And right now, we're in the dark. And meaning that the manager has not apprised the programmers of what is really in place for us to do that when we in fact also have resources that we can bring to the table which he is not wanting to listen to in any way. I'd Tom? like to pick up on that point. Now, I interviewed uh, Mayor Vince Gray the day before he was elected and after the interview you know I, I walked with him I said you know uh, we have to move soon is there anything you could do to help us? He gave us three places to, to look into on, on, on that day. The point of it is, is that everybody in the city wants to help us. Mm -hmm. People in D.C. love this station. The general manager has not shown a willingness not only to reach out to these people, but again, I, I use this word betraying the community. It's the number one question you get as you move through the community. Have you all found a place yet? And of course, that, that affects revenues because you're only giving money to a state that you don't know that may not exist. Right. Secondly, for him to fire the one person mm -hmm. who was the prime mover in moving us to where we are now, the one person who has experience at the station in moving the station, the one person who has experience of all of the equipment, as raggedy as it is, the one person who understands what we need, he fires them. That only shows a lack of vision, but it's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we have about three minutes. Uh, Joni, do you want to take up I that just, uh, uh, conversation? Actually, we have two minutes. <laughs> Go I ahead. echo with what everyone just said. It's, it's a very sad state of affairs that the management style doesn't embrace everybody who has these skills. You have a Robin Holden 
who has all kinds of skills that could be used to helping us move. As Tom just mentioned, uh, the person who had the experience, which took 26 months to move us the last time, Bob Dowtry, was fired. Uh, you know, that's not the style that we need. Those are not the kind of uh, the wisdom that we need to help us make this huge leap into a new building. It just, it's just very, very troubling, and it makes you wonder. One of the things that I wanted to mention, because several people at the table have stated that Bob Daughtry has, fired, has been fired, but one thing that we do need to le let the listening and viewing audience know is that he was fired without just cause. Mm -hmm. And no stated fired, cause. Without, fired without just cause and has not been privy to a customary exit interview or any kind of documentation uh, to suggest why he was fired. Um, from what I understand, that the general manager, John Hughes, moved Mr. Daughtry into a position that was non-existing, not funded, and then seven, elim days, later, seven days later eliminated that position so that the listening and viewing audience needs to understand that situation. He moved him to a position that did not exist, was not funded, and then eliminated seven days later. So that is a backdoor way of moving someone out of a position where more than um, probably 85% of the programmers were in favor of him continuing to be our program director. Um, he was the interim program director, but was looking forward to him being the permanent program director and allowing him to lead us into the future. Um, it's, <laughs> my goodness, Dumb. time flies. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> um, we, we have like maybe 30 seconds. Any closing statements? Just that that's the worst kind of passive aggressive behavior you can find, okay, in terms of management style. Um, I think there's a lack of communication, a lack of sense of urgency um, that the management seems to, to uh, be, be lacking. And I, th this experience has been very challenging, but I'm happy that we're able to work in concert with LSB at this juncture and see how we can make things turn around for the station. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of our program. I'd like to thank Willa Jenkins, Mayuki Williams, Tom Porter, and Joni Eisenberg. All of our guests are programmers and hosts at WPFW 89.3 FM, so be sure to tune in next time as we continue to bring you the information that is important to you. For more information about PFW Programmers Association, you can visit their website at www.pfwpass.org. Thank you for tuning in.